suffering exists. Suffering arises from attachment to desires. Suffering ceases when attachment to desire ceases. <coughs> Freedom from suffering is possible. How? Having the right view and the right thought, that is wisdom. Having the right speech and the right action, morality. And the right livelihood and meditating with the right effort, right mindfulness and the right contemplation. Dear all, welcome to Rabuka Monastery. Today, Swami Sarva Devananda, the head of the Vedanta Society of Southern California, will be talking about Buddha, one of the greatest characters the world has ever seen. Sambrajashukham Trinavad Vihaya Sandharayam Chivaras Chinnavesham Neenindya Vedam Pashughatanancha Dayamayam Tan Pranato Smibuddham O Shanti 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 Buddha who renounced the happiness of the kingdom as if it were a blade of grass, who owed the ragged guard of renunciation, who denied the authority even of the Vedas and denounced animal sacrifice. I salute that compassionate Buddha again and again. Om, peace, peace, peace be unto us all. Happy Mother's Day. And Buddha is an embodiment of motherhood. Love, compassionate. Love, incarnate. So it is good that it has coincided together this day with Mother's Day. His life, as you have just listened in brief, is actually for the good of humanity. That mother heart is needed to nurture the whole universe. As a family, as a child, is nurtured by mother. So the world needs nurturing. And not with sword, not with anger, not with violence, but it is with love and compassion. And that compassion is not showing compassion, but out of generosity of feeling the oneness with the universe. So Buddha didn't talk about that Vedantic concept of oneness of this and that, but he lived that life. That's the uniqueness of Buddha. And he didn't go to the analytical and analytical aspect of why it is happening, what that, but he went to solve the problem of life. As you have just heard, Buddha's major idea is that life has suffering. Birth is suffering, growth is suffering, disease is suffering, death is suffering. So get out of suffering. So the fundamental point, if we can concise the whole concept of Buddha, we can say these three words. That what is the philosophical understanding about life? We look at life in a different perspective when we are young. We look at the same world differently when we mature a little bit. And when we become a little older, then we understand the world to be totally different. 
this question of understanding and viewing the world in which way we like to view. So Buddha is normally, according to our Vedantic understanding, Buddha is a person of a God incarnate. Hindus worship Buddha as God himself, as like Krishna, as like Rama. No distinction. It is the same for the good of humanity he did and descended. We know that this contribution of Buddha is unique in India when the whole Vedic culture was misunderstood and it was then it was then taken to be the Karmakanda, the, the portion of that activity where you do Vedic rituals and in Vedic rituals it turned that animal sacrifice started and animal sacrifice is a obligatory and compulsory thing. It becomes like a standard formula. Animal sacrifice is to kill the animal here. But it is very easy to catch one innocent animal and chop the head. My animal and animal instinct I'm cutting. It is the easiest way of misrepresenting the idea of sacrifice. And then it becomes so rampant and all over the context in India that people forgot the philosophy behind. And if you cut your ego, then what will happen? You'll be the best sample of human personality in the world. If you can erase your ego, then you see the whole world is your own. There's no parallel. There's no one is stranger to you. But when this, this ego remains the same, and the poor animal is the victim of our sacrifice. Then it comes blood. And that, that is the pain and suffering. And Buddha fought against it. And when the length and breadth of the country, he fought against it and stopped this Pushughatanam animal. But killed the animal here, which is the center of all trouble. So Buddha, as is born, I know before I go to the, some philosophical discussion, <coughs> I'll come to the point from uh, briefly overviewing his life. He was born in the 6th century in Kopilavastu at the foothill of Himalayas. And as he was born, his father, it's an Indian tradition, just a baby is born, they go for horoscope, sitting, seeing this planetary system or what is the position of the planets and things, what will be the future of this boy, what he will... And they surprisingly found that this boy will be a great personality in any way it goes. It becomes a king, he will be the ideal king, most powerful king. And if he becomes, if there is another tendency, he can renounce the world. And be a world teacher also. But father thought, my kingdom, who will be the inheritor? So let my son be there. So he created such an in, in environment in which Buddha was raised, Siddhartha, that he does not see any suffering. Because when you see suffering, then question comes. What is this? And then you try to escape from this and then you will be disinterested and then you will be a, uh, have an idea of renouncing everything. Huh? So his father was intelligent. He wanted to avoid that uh, scope. So he put him into the beautiful garden, rose garden, flower and um, fountain and singing and dancing and all youth and there is no old age, there is no disease, that type of environment. But you cannot hide everything from the eyes of anyone. So when he found first the realities of life, realities of life, what? He found that he was one day, he, he wanted to see the town, city, but he was always confined in the palace. He got bored. 
So when he wanted to go, he was taken and he was found that he was taken to the and he found some old man tottering over the uh, stick. Then he asked, what is this? Why, why this man is so lean and thin and holding the stick, moving? Well, he's old age. Well, what is old age? Because he has no idea about old age. And that question said, old age? Old age comes to everybody. Hmm? Youth is youth, but youth is also matures into old age. Physical body will be that. I'll be like that. My wife will be like that. And my son will be like that. Yes, everyone will have to be old one day. <coughs> then he saw the other one picture. Disease. No? Bad person. Sick person. And then he also asked the same question. What is this? Yes, everyone will be fall sick so long the body is there, sickness is natural. Then, then he found last stroke. He found a dead body carried by people. And what is this? He said, man is dead. Man is dead. I will also die. Yes, you will die. Everyone will die. And that, these three very big Things which we see day and night, yeah, we take it superficially. Yeah, it's there. Ignore. Uh, hide. Hide ourselves from the truth. And think, okay, okay, let me sing, dance, and do all the things first, and we'll think of later on. But he was really, it made him thoughtful, and also saw a monk with bright face, no position, and nothing, nothing there, but full of peace and joy. Then he tried to find what is this light then? And is there anything beyond? And how to solve this problem of suffering, death, disease, old age? Everyone will have to face this. Where is the solution? He then went to different teachers to find the solution to different spiritual texts. But no one could satisfy. Then he tried to solve the problem by himself. That is the time he renounced everything and sat under the bow tree. It's still there. If you, if you can go, you can find that same bow tree, say for thousands of years. Maybe it died once and they planted something else. But anyhow, <laughs> because it cannot be eternal. As human being dies, so tree also dies. No? If we say the tree does not die, then the formula does not work. <laughs> but anyhow, and he sat there, and with a firm determination, he said, I will have to find the solution of this, this suffering. Is what is me? What is this? So introspective, he became introspective and started meditating, 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 and trying to find the solution. And what happened? He became so weak and sick. Sick means he gave up fasting. He, he gave up eating. And he gave up doing anything else but to explore the truth. And that continued and continued. Then he said that he became emaciated like this. Extreme austerity. He took a resolution. To success, to have success in any life, we need that type of resolution. What it is all? Iho asane shushyatu me shariram. My body, I am sitting in this posture to find the truth. In my, let my body shushyatu, let it be dried like a dry leaf, fall down. Shushyatu me shariram. Tak asti mangsham, from my body. The skin, the flesh, the bones, they separate out. Without food, without anything. Tagasti maamsan pralayam chajatu. Aprapo bodhing. Unless I attain to that wisdom. Bodh. Bhu kalpa durlabham. Which is very rare to attain. Even in thousand lifetimes. I am not going to leave this seat. And with that firm resolution, he sat there. And you find that sometimes there is this one, one, big, one painting where you find that Buddha has become emaciated like that. 
It has become like, you know, in Africa when the uh, people starve and hunger eh? and they become totally skinny. That type of, he became like that. And that is the time, by God's grace, uh, Sujata came, that lady, who, who planned to offer something to the God of, of forest. To offer something. So she brought the rice pudding. You all know rice pudding. And that was the thing which saved his life. And after eating, he then took the middle path. Not too much austerity. To extreme austerity does not do anything. It destroys the body only. So what is the Gita's idea? He took that principle and went on exploring the truth. And his philosophy will come what he thought about life. And then he attained what is called bodhi. And that bodhi, the state of awakening. We are all sleeping. Sleeping because about the truth we are all ignorant. We do not know. But we are sleeping, but we are awake in this world. In the Gita it is said that in which Ordinary people are awake. The sages are totally unaware of that. As if it is their sleeping state. And in which they are awake, we are sleeping in that truth. We do not know what we are, but we know this world to be true. And they know that ultimate truth is the truth. This is all a phase of change. So that was the, he, he experienced that and entered into that extreme joy. And then he was full and he was satisfied and he got the wisdom. And then he preached that wisdom to the people of the world. And he has his five friends who are ascetics. They left Buddha when they saw that he has broken his vows and is eating rice pudding. And he went back to them first and they were all in the Benaras and saw them and from the distance when they saw these five guys saw Buddha coming, then they thought, oh my God, that fake guy is coming again. And but when he approached them, appeared before them, they are overwhelmed with the spirituality of Buddha, the face shining and beaming with joy, and that transformed their mind, and they became the first disciple of Buddha. This. Now, so his sight of disease, old age, death, convinced him that world is full of suffering. Though we see there is joy, traces of joy, but the traces of joy are also cause of suffering. Is it not? You, you have a good time today, and if you don't have that same situation tomorrow, are you happy or are you unhappy? So that is the point. Even the happiness is not happiness. Happiness is a cause of suffering again. Suffering is suffering. That we understand. But your Good situation is also can be a cause of your future suffering. <laughs> we love our children very dearly and we raise them and put them our heart and soul and when they come to their age and they don't listen to you, don't look at you, they do their own things, what happens? That which is a source of joy that becomes a cause of suffering. So in, in, if we analyze this way, this whole universe, it is full of suffering. So Buddha analyzed that, but by just by seeing, and then he took the life of mendicant's life, that means carefree life, only for knowing the truth and possible way of escape then he found. He tried to find the suffering is, the, is there any cause of suffering? What is the cause? Why do you suffer? That he found. And also, if that is the cause, is there any means to get out? 
and that led him to this spiritual practice and then uh, attainment of that nirvana, state of nirvana, state of freedom, state of attainment of the truth. Went and then, then he sat, as I told you before, with an iron will, a mind free from all disturbing thoughts and passions. He endeavored to unravel, to continuous meditation, the mystery of the world's miseries, till at last his ambition was crowned with success and he became a Buddha. Buddha means became enlightened. So, Buddha said himself, Buddha is not a man. Buddha is a state. And that state you can attain, I can attain. That is the glory of Buddha. He didn't say that all holiness belongs to me and you are all sinners. But it is, I have attained that, you can attain that. That is the greatest message of Buddha. So, the message of his enlightenment which laid the foundation of Buddhism, a religion and philosophy, then it spread gradually to the north and south, in Ceylon, Burma and Sam, and also in China, Japan and other areas. Then, his teachings were oral. They teaching, there's no book, he didn't write the books first. And later on, by his intimate disciples, it was recorded. And the books which the Buddhism carries, three major texts are there. It's called the three P Takas, many three baskets. What are those? One is he set an order of monks who want to delve into the truth and denounce and renounce the things which are temporary. So that Sangha, it's called the organization, monastic organization. So the first is Vinaya Pitakam, how the monks will be conducting their day-to-day -day life, all the rules and regulations regarding that. That is called the conduct of the monastic tradition which is started in that congregation. <coughs> then, some sermons and dialogues, which is called Sutta Pitam. And the third is the exposition of the philosophical teachings, explanations of those uh, rules which has been given as a sermon, what sermon he gave. So, they are all early Buddhistic philosophy. Later on, the followers divided into two. One is called the Theravada, you know now, these names are now very popular, Theravada or Hinayana, flourishing in the south and stronghold in Ceylon, Burma, Sham and other areas. And Pali was the language, common man's language, he spoke in that language that claims to be more orthodox and faithful to the teachings of Buddha. And now came Mahajana, another group, who flourished in the north, that is in Tibet, China, Japan. And they focused on Sanskrit was their language. Many translated into Tibetan and Chinese later on those texts. Enormous books were found. Now in this country also we know of many of the Tibetan monks, Tibetan <coughs> monasteries. So that tradition is more popular in the world. So now, <clears throat> what Buddha wanted? Buddha, what he found? In those days, as I said, there is a tradition in India to logic, their logical fight, log logical fight, eh? two intelligent people sitting together and threadbare analysis, what you say, what I say, and spending the day and night in intellectualism only, and nothing coming into the heart, not solving the problem of suffering and pain, but only intellectual analysis and debate. And who wins whom? Who conquers whom? So see, Buddha disliked this metaphysical discussion, which is devoid of any practical utility. 
practical point is that there is suffering. And if there is suffering, what can I do out? How can I overcome? That should be the fundamental point. Rather focus, drifting the focus from that to intellectually what is, to understand what is the correct position, your position or my position, Vedanta position or karma position or the buddhistic position. This fight, it is an, it's one type of spending the time in useless turmoil. So, his attitude, anti-speculative attitude was his attitude, is such different from that his soul, the idea comes, his soul, is there any soul? Soul is different from the body. Does it survive after death? It was the eternal, it's non-eternal, these different types of problems, questions and its solution, to find a solution, the only interaction, intellectual interaction, he didn't like it. With the parable, he, he, he told the stories and that leads to partial views like conflicting one side account of the account given by the blind persons touching different parts. So if you understand, don't understand the total meaning of the parable, then you understand the truth wrongly. So he suggested that, the, that this life should be experienced in this suffering, on the ground of suffering, and you have to get out of it. Be mukti, be mukti, freedom. So, so major thought is that there is suffering, four fundamental truth what Buddhism talks about. What is that? There is suffering. Second point, is there any cause of suffering? Yes, there should be some cause of suffering. Can this suffering be eradicated? Yes, it can be done. And can this suffering, there is a standard path? Yes, there is a path. The whole idea of Buddha stands on this four, arja, satta, eternal, uh, eternal truth. What is the truth? Fundamentally, to analyze life and see that everything what we see, that is joy, that is peace, but it is not so. It has its weak points. It is suffering in another mask. It's covered. It comes in a covering of a nice packing. We can pack one ugly thing inside and make a very nice packing and give a gift to anybody. So this is the way. A package, package is good. The world is a packing. A nice packing. Everywhere. A beautiful flower, beautiful this, beautiful that, that. But in, in it, if you really go for a few days, then the beautiful flower becomes dried. It, it loses its attraction. Uh, the, the, the thing which is, is really appeals to the mind today, after some time it, it repels. So these are the few points that you have to understand that life, he tells, this is, let me go to the little of that philosophical part. That there are, these are the four noble truths I have talked about. There is one fundamental point is that the existence of suffering and there is a then, there is a cause of suffering. And there is a cessation of suffering. And there is a way to reach that state of nirvana, freedom, vimutti. So, what is that? Buddha said in one place, we have to understand. Sometimes we put Buddhism as only uh, shunnabad or wire theory. But Buddha himself said, there is an unborn, an unoriginated, an unmade, an uncompounded, where they are not, O oh mendicants, there will be no escape from the world of birth, or that which originated, or that is made, or that is compounded. This world is what? Is a compound. Our body is what? Is a compound. 
of the five elements air water fire see that's we consume that's why the body is this body so how it is compounded if there is nothing which is beyond that non compound material so creation depends on some creator so similarly there must be something unborn from which this birth appears to be here and that's why the philosophy is called this it is a circle of fire that is very common idea of buddhism that this you see a circle of fire but it is a rotation of a fire ball in high speed you see the circle because you see the circle does not mean it is circle it is a static ball but you are giving a rotation and it appears to be a circle so because you see the way we are it is a it is a mass of change it is a total quick succession of the changes giving an appearance of this existence so that it comes from that there is one unborn truth which appears as born there is one unborn unoriginated truth which appears as originated which is unmade appears to be made and there is an uncompounded truth which has appeared as a compounded so this is the that it, you know almost this truth is a language of language it is a language vedanta will say purna full and buddhism says shunna but buddha didn't say all these things he didn't go into this philosophical uh, uh, discussion and things he said pay your attention to eradicate the suffering you are in we are all busy with uh, analyzing the thing this common example i always say that someone the fire the house is in fire and now pandit scholars they will start talking about oh why the fire in the south east corner the fire should not come that way sir it should have come this side and then someone say no because of this wind because of this and it has happened like that no 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 so you and the house is in the burning condition bring a bucket of water first stop that fire then you can analyze all these things is it not a wise decision <laughs> ramakrishna said that so he also said the simple thing realize god first and if you have time enough then you decide what is what what is this what is that what is that first you are in suffering you are burning you have a burning pain and don't go on analyzing give some pain medication reduce the pain and get out of the pain <coughs> if you can emphasis should be there so buddha brought the attention to pinpointed point uh, idea rovindra tego has one beautiful uh, idea he has given that in the pali literature buddha said that as the mother saves the life of his son or child in the same manner grow infinite love for all the created creatures of the world up above below and all around everywhere let your love flow unobstructed free from all jealousy hatred and animosity whether you stand whether you walk whether you sit whether you are lying down where you are sleeping keep this idea of friendliness maitri bhavana mitta this is called brahma vihara mittancha sarvalokasmin manasambhavase apurimanam etam sutin adithyasam brahmamitam viharam 
idham bahu. This is the Pali language. I'm just reading because it is here. So in Pali, Buddha get this message. This is the message what Rabindranath Tagore, the uh, great mystic saint poet of India, Nobel laureate poet, he said that this is called Brahma Vihar. See, Buddha himself said in this language where he used Brahma Metam Viharam. This is the Brahma Vihar. What is Brahma Vihar? See Brahman everywhere, Vedanta will say. Buddha didn't say. Brahma is a too high a word. Very confusing in the air. What Buddha said? Come to reality. This friendship. Send your love for everyone. All the creatures in the universe. That is the Maitri Bhavana. The thought of love. Connectedness. Crush your ego. Then what will happen? What will remain? Love will remain. And that love will flow everywhere. And that is the instruction Buddha said. Whether as, as a mother, today Mother's Day, as a mother protects his, her own child with love, with all her strength, with all compassion. Similarly, you send your motherly love for all creatures, starting from your own friends, even your enemies, to the animals, to the trees, to the plants, everywhere. And if you can send this love, this maitri, the friendship with all, we are all one. We love because it is the same. He's not saying it is same or anything. He's saying spread this idea of friendliness to all created beings. This is called Brahmametam Biharam. Then you are actually living in the consciousness of one Brahman. Because that time he has to face, as I said, all the scriptural scholars who say Brahma is the truth. But he says, your Brahma or Brahma knowledge is what? See the oneness, all. Send your love for all. You feel the suffering of everyone. You feel the joy of everyone. You are one with them. So that's a practical application what Buddha wanted to teach during that time and Rabindranath Tagore quoted that and he said, this Brahma Vihar, Bhagavan Buddha, the Lord Buddha said, is not a matter of easy thing. It is not a parrot-like statement of following some rules and regulations. It has been manifested through the life of Buddha. So, you, we must have to awaken this karuna, means compassion, this love. And this is necessary. And it will bind the whole humanity into love. We cannot deny this power of love. This power is there in the heart of every human being. But it is to be manifested that is Buddha taught us. And that is the point. What Buddha's teachings is a practical application of Vedanta, we can say. That we are in suffering, you have to, if you deny that, then you are in loss. First analyze the life and then try to get out of it. How to get out of it? And that Buddha's path is for only thinking, deep analysis. Look at yourself. What is happening in you? Go dive deep and deep and deep. What is this? I will come now to think about it very seriously. <coughs> Suppose you say we are in suffering. No? That, that we are accepting that we are in suffering. But why suffering? What will be the response? Why suffering? Why we suffer? It has been. But Buddha says because you are ignorant. <laughs> because you, what is ignorance? Then he says it is ignorance which has caused this suffering. But 
why this suffering came? Why this came? Because you are John birth and death. This is the cycle it is going on. You do not know that you have something to give. You have something in your store. You are the friendship and love which is there inside. You forgot that. It is covered with ignorance. And then you get at attached to things because of your ego. When the ignorance came, what is the first thing came? I. And when the I came, then what happens? I want to have it. I love it. It's mine. So this first is the sense of ignorance. And ignorance has created the wrong concept about life that life is miserable or life has suffering. To ignore that and make it a different concept in our mind that is a part of ignorance. And this ignorance, why it gives us the idea this world is something very pleasing and we can find all joy here. Because Buddha says it is your some there is some boosting from the back back. What is the boosting? Boosting of your thoughts, old thoughts and actions, samaskaras. The five children in the same family you can find how even their child, how their tendencies are all different. Someone is very loving, someone is very pushing, someone is very uh, bullying. Huh? Why it happens? Because it is of their samaskaras. So we are born with that samaskaras because Hinduism and Buddhism believe in the rebirth, theory of rebirth. And we accumulate our past momentum. We are here because of our past momentum, is it not? Hinduism will say, Buddhism will say. What is that? We are here because what is my, I did so many actions and thoughts and last time what I thought in the last point of leaving the body that has come brought me to this condition. Infinite number of emotions and all levels of storehouse of samaskaras or thoughts are there but it is the present life is a moment, momentary expression of one of the such thoughts. So it says this samaskara, this impression, latent impression, it gives us the concept that the tremendous desire that I will have to have it. Everyone has different choices. One may choose for becoming an engineer, one may choose for becoming one doctor, one may be a rich guy, one may be a thief, one may be a uh, rude person, crude person, whatever. And one may be uh, totally giving their life for the good of others. So all these tendencies, they are born and accordingly their work starts in this life. So second point is that it comes from the experience of an impression of our past lives. Because this ignorance came and this ignorance root is the previous momentum which is pushing us. And as a result, suppose when that sounds car we are born, what happens? It takes us to the experience, the world we need, who will experience. So who is going to experience this? Then comes the I consciousness, experience of I comes. That is called the big gun or buddhi. According to Buddha, this visible world is have no entity, has no permanent entity. It is only a chain of experiences. And it's called the Anuhuti Dhara. It's a flow of experience. See, is it not? Every moment is what? You see one experience, it goes, another experience comes, another experience, another experience. In the waking state, it is continuously experience after experience after experience, no? The previous experience is gone. Now another experience, another experience. The whole day, and now go to sleep. Dream experience, that's also experience. Goes, 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 goes. Then sleep experience, that also goes, goes, goes. And then come back again. This The entire life is called the Anuhuti Dhara, the 
the chain of experiences, moving experiences, old passes, new comes, yesterday's experience, today's experience is different. So this is called the uh, Vijnana. And as soon as that ego comes, I am separate from the world and then I want to experience it. So this is the, there comes the two things. I am here and there is an object. I like to touch it. I like to test it. I like to uh, have it, possess it. So Gyano and the Gyo, this Gyata and Gyo. Gyata means he who knows and Gyo is the object, this connection. Subject object or the sense objects and the sense organs. They get a, a connection, pull for that. And as a result, we get some knowledge. How the knowledge comes? Knowledge comes from your five senses and your mind connected with that. So when the mind is there and the sense eyes are open, eyes will not see unless mind is connected. So this is called Soro Ayatol 6. The 6 gives us the perception of the world. The object is there. There is some ego sense, I am here. And the mind is connected with that, that gives the connection with the world. That's called the Sarayatan. And then as a result, when these six things are functioning, then we get in touch with the object. That's called sparso. That means I was separate, I get touched, I get connected with the sensory universe. Ego is very subtle. Vijnana comes the experience. Experience is done by mind and the senses. And that's why it is called the touch, sparsa, six senses, organs, and the object outside, they get connected together. And as a result comes our anubhuti experience, sense experience. Touch will generate some sense experience. In this way, as a result of contact with the knower and the known, the experience or it is called the Vishya Pravaha, the flow of the creation continues. That is continuing. And now, it, now the question comes, why I get connected with the sensory universe, with my sense objects, with my ego? Because there is thirst. We have thirst. We have thirst for seeing, thirst for Seeing, feeling, tasting, touching, all these experiences, that's the inner thirst. And the thirst comes from the past life's experience, no? Boosting us. It's like a booster. Life after life, this we this believe that 8.4 billions of births we try to experience, like a <coughs> cat, like a dog, like a squirrel, like a bird. Uh, like a plant, like trees, experience, experience, this experience, okay, done. Another experience I done. Another experience is done. It's continuously going on. So the thirst is the cause of this. This thirst comes. And the above thirst becomes ingredient of the next birth. Suppose I did so much in this life. Most of the people, what they think? When they leave their body, people say, what do you want now? Oh, I tried my best, but I could not accomplish this. Uh, had I born again another chance, I will do that. <laughs> Most of the people have some expectation like that. So this is the next life's upadan. It is the ingredient for next birth. This life went on because of the past life. Past life's impression forced us. To, uh, ego is here. Sensory universe is there. Sense objects, sense, senses are connected with the mind. It is connecting with the sensory object. And as a result, my desire is not ending. My expectation is not ending. What I have experienced, I want to experience something plus, something more. So that is the ingredient of next part. And that creates the itcha, desire, that I will have to be born. And that arises in the mind and prepares for the future growth. And then you are born in this world. It is called the sanshara, birth in the world. 
and then birth and again death and again birth again death again birth again death so it is this called the dhara this cycle of birth and death continues these are the 12 points of buddhistic philosophy which is called a, a dhara change how life to death it continuing don't bring god here buddha didn't bring god here buddha tried to based on the experience we are going through without god that can be solved this way that it is there is you and you are a sum total of our past experience and there is a boosting in your or our heart and that is pushing us for the life to go and experience something further and that there is an ex external world there is the sense organs there is the mind being all connected together this functioning of the world is going on and we are finishing one experience another experience is waiting for us we are not satisfied with the older experience we need a new experience and new experience and new experience suppose this life goes away that and then it's okay this life is gone what about next okay next mercedes bench eh? this car is camry i this what hard and it is now disposable so you throw away and next car you get another costly car or any car of your choice another body and another desire another thought so it is endless chain is going on if we know this then what will happen buddha stand is here if you know this then what will happen you will not want to be in the flow of life and death like that ignorantly running after and and this life is not miserable pleasurable because it is a combination of so much of negativity and suffering is there you want to be suffering again and again like this go on for you it is okay but buddha says no you should if you go through this another life another life even you go to the uh, heaven 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 there is a life what is that life after that life are they satisfied billionaires are they satisfied with billion now who is the more billion one can get and more billion and more is there any end of that no that if you know and earning this billion is not an easy thing cheating tax this that is not an easy thing you can have, uh, keep some lawyers cunning lawyers who can help you <laughs> but 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 this process is ultimately you don't get peace you don't get joy rather use the maitri bhavana as you as and at the very beginning we have said buddha said send friendship for everyone right? as the holy mother said today's mother's day eh? try to uh, make the whole world your own no in a mother's language so this is the language buddha said maitri bhavana send this love item from your own self don't limit here and if you can expand that way then your suffering will be gone and because you will be identifying with the whole world no so the philosophy of buddha is that there is suffering who can deny that first of all if someone denies that they need not come to buddha <laughs> they need not go to need not go to any a uh, temple they need read any scripture if one feels that there is no suffering why bother so don't bother but those who really feel that there is joy and suffering but little joy more suffering and this every human joy itself becomes a cause of suffering if we understand this in first of all understanding this very very important and understanding then the process how we are experiencing this world how i am born with my past bundle of impressions that is that's giving a boosting in my life the momentum i am bound slave of my past desires and the thirst for the sense objects to enjoy through the senses my mind my ego so it is functioning in this cycle is a machine you are trapped into it it is functioning this way and are you happy with it no if you analyze them discard i understand this is the thing which is taking me to the cycle of birth and death and this is the way with this philosophy of loving everyone extending my love extending my heart to everyone then 
I can feel the freedom. So that is the state. This is the problem. This is the solution according to Buddha. And as I said, there are uh, the, the how to do that? He came down to realistic point of life. Don't stand on high philosophy. Be right, rightly understand the situation. Right thinking. Try to think rightly. As, as you have heard at the very beginning. Right speech. Be a gentleman. Be a good person. Be a kind person. So kind speech, open and truthful. Right action. Take pure action. Take honest, honesty and peaceful attitude in your action. Right livelihood. Don't hurt anyone. What the question of in any religion? Why really bring religion into it? My, my religion, your religion. Forget the religion. Don't hurt. These are the very fundamental principles. And you apply right effort for your self-control, for your self-effort. Try to make proper right direction, right <coughs> mindfulness. Point your mind for understanding this truth. How you are getting into the cycle of birth and death, how you can get out of it. And eight point, right type of concentration, deep meditation on the realistic life. That means their Buddha's message is a very practical path coming down to our day-to-day -day living, not talking high philosophy. It is high philosophy. You can go to Buddhism, it's a high philosophy. But a practical means has been given to us to get out of the cycle of birth and death. How can we do it? It is within our fold if we leave this eightfold path of truthfulness, right thinking, right speech, right action, all this. Be attentive to what you are doing. It's life transforming effect should be there. Your character should be built. That is Buddha's greatest contribution. And Buddha is a state that everyone can attain. It is a bodhi sattva. Eh? Buddha is not a person, but it is the truth which he experienced and gave it for us. So, our greatest respect and devotion is offered to Buddha and to all the mother in the universe. Let motherhood express more kindness, love, as Buddha said, Maitri Bhavana. That will be our goal to reach. Thank you all. Om Namo Namo Buddha Diva Karayo Om Namo Namo Gautam Chandrikayo Om Namo Namo Ananta Gunadharayo Om Namo Namo Shakyanandanayo Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Salutations to Buddha, the son of knowledge. Salutations to Gautama, who sheds the moonlight of compassion. Salutations to the holder of endless noble qualities. Salutations to the blessed son of the Shaka clan. Om, peace, peace, peace be unto us all. Thank you.